Well, this morning, we're taking a look at some great things, and we'll get back to that 41 years. Uh, Naturally, this is a great setting because it's Super Bowl Sunday, and to see you in Hope Chapel, see you at church today, that's exceptional. Your team's going to win because of that. I just want you to know that. Cute story. Heard about this man that obtained tickets to the Super Bowl, and when he got there, he realized he was in the nosebleed section. He looked down at the 50-yard line. There's an empty seat. He ran down, claimed the seat, and said, what of you? Who would ever pass this up? As he said it to the elderly man next to him. And the man said, they're my wife. And he said, oh, we have attended the Super Bowl ever since we've been married, but she passed away. He said, oh, I'm so sorry. You couldn't get a friend to join you? He said, no, the old man said. They're all attending the funeral. Some of you are going to like that one, maybe. So thank you, diehard people, for Jesus. And I'm telling you, that's who's in this room. And that makes it very comfortable for me to share what we're going to be sharing. As you know, we're in a series that's entitled Good Habits with Giving Christ More in 2024. We're all about giving Christ more. And today's message for some of us might be something saying, oh, I've already heard this message on this or similar. But there's something about stepping into prayer that is exceptional. Today's message is entitled, as you take a look at your bulletin card, The Good Habit of Prayer. The Good Habit of Prayer. Uh, As I alluded to, Ainsley and I have been married over 41 years. And it's been exceptional. We kind of know now when things aren't quite connecting with us. We'll actually even just say that. You know, I just feel like we're not really connected. Now, I did not really uh, marry a business partner, even though she's an exceptional business partner. I've been in business prior to, to pastoring, and pastoring's better. But the idea being is that when Ainsley and I just grew the Banning Foursquare Church in wonderful ways and to see the beautiful blossoming of Hope Chapel, matter of fact, yesterday marks 22 years. It would be our first sermon here at Hope Chapel and to release and to send people off from this church in great ways just has been outstanding. But I didn't marry a business partner. So we realize if something is not quite connecting, we realize that love is really spelled time. We just needed time to be together. And that's really been an issue that has helped us in some significant ways. Time apart from what we normally are called to do, time together, it's been wonderful. Now, there's many things as a lead pastor I can delegate to have others do, but I cannot delegate someone else to be the spouse to Ainsley. That's my responsibility. And when it comes to our relationship with Jesus, no one is going to be able to take that responsibility in relationship with you and Jesus. That's your responsibility. Now, you might be able to see somebody else enjoying some tranquility and some confidence in their life, maybe overflowing with joy, but that's not your experience until you might realize like maybe your spouse could come to you one day and maybe that spouse being Jesus, it's really not, we're not connecting here. It's not really happening. Something needs to change. And so when we take a look at something that we take a look at today about prayer It's going to be important for us once again because we've been looking at good habits and good habits require training. We saw in scripture, it says, man, make sure that you train for godliness. And I think it was our Men of Hope director, Ben Cowart yesterday, said that it takes 26 repetitions for that particular pattern to become a habit, 26 times. So if I'm talking about prayer today, And you say, I heard that one. I'm hoping that I am now going to be talking about people that never really have given prayer a chance. And maybe I'm talking to some people that say, yeah, I pray and it kind of fits here or there. Then let's give Christ more. 
in 2024. Let's try that. Let's try because our theme is all about Luke 6, verse 38. Give, comma, and you will receive. Good measure, press down and rolling over. I'm telling you, you give some time to Jesus, you will never regret it, but it's going to require good habit. It is not a one and done. Some of you know that. Some of you are trying to make your way back to Jesus because you say, how did I get so far? I'm going to blame it on that church. They didn't keep me amped enough. Well, maybe it was just Christ coming to you and saying, you know, we're just not connecting here. Something's not clicking, and we just need to make time together. I like one of the great ways to really click to have time together with Jesus. He talks about that, and it's in John chapter 15. So, Lord, as we open your word, open our hearts, open our understanding. If anything comes to us by revelation, it's going to be you in Jesus' name. Check it out with me, Matthew chapter, excuse me, John chapter 15, verse 5, and then to verse 7. Yes, I'm the vine, and you are the branches. And those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. And when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. Take a look. The key, the key to effective prayer is remaining, remaining. People say, okay, the Bible's mentioned there, his word, and then remain in me or abide in me. Prayer is where it's at. So if something is noted for you personally in a relationship that you have going on with Jesus, and if you don't, you're here maybe, maybe you're checking out and just saying, man, I'm going to see where, what Hope Travel is all about, maybe see what God is like and where he's going to fit my life then this would be for you. And if you pray and you aren't encouraging others to pray, may this be a message then to say, let's all do this together. It's going to be important for us. So how do we remain in Jesus? Pray. is just to pray. So let's take a look here because how many recognize, if just by show of hands, when you pray and after you're done praying, things just feel better that day. Just kind of show your hands. Just look at that. I mean, come on. So this is, a, this is a real attention getter. And what a great prophetic testimony you just gave reference to. When we don't pray, I feel it. It's not like that's sinful or anything. I just don't feel as good as when I do start with prayer. So let's take a look. I'm going to use the acronym of the word time. Remember that? True love is meaning time. So to remain with God, to remain with Christ is prayer. Let's take a look. The letter T is time. So Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 says this. Devote yourself to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Just, just look at that for a moment. Devote yourself to prayer with an alert mind. Now, anything that you devote yourself to requires time. You're going to devote yourself to something. It's going to be good. It's going to be important. So letter A, you can see on your notes, choose a specific time. This is really a place to begin for some people, maybe to reacquaint yourself with Jesus. For some people, begin by choosing a specific time. And be creative. Some people like to pray in the morning, some at lunchtime, some in the evening when the children all go off to bed. Some with little ones become creative. I had one parent say, my time to pray is when I'm in the shower. It's the only time I have to myself. That's creative. It'll work. But specifically pick one and then make sure it's predictable and consistent. That's going to be important. Pick that time and then go for that. It's going to be important. My best time is in the morning because I like to connect with Jesus and start my day that way. That's that's benefits me. So let her be, invest enough time. Invest enough time. Now, I don't know. It's going to be whatever you might feel is adequate time to connect with Jesus. Some people might say, yeah, five minutes is what I kind of give them when I pray. 
If that's the, that's the case. Now, if you're married and you spend time with your spouse for five minutes, that's going to be a pretty shoddy relationship. But that's okay. That's what you're going to devote to that. And it's the same with Jesus. It's going to be important for us. Now, one of the things that I want to encourage you with and, and highlight, because people, this is not about a formula that I'm laying out. I'm just saying, man, let's just connect with Jesus because God might be coming to you and say, you know, we're just not clicking lately. It's just not happening. You're coming to heaven with me because of what I did, but for you, you're sure struggling. So one of the things that I found very helpful for Hope Chapel is something we call half hour with God. Half hour. How to pray. Five or six ingredients, really, of just in putting time with God in prayer. So you who are online, go to our website, Hope Chapel HB. Hope Chapel Huntington Beach, HB. And then right at the homepage, check out media, bring that link down, see resources, you'll find it right there. So you go ahead, and if you just, these six ingredients, we want just five minutes with each item. First is praise and then waiting on the Lord, but maybe it's just one minute free. I think that's a great beginning. Just one minute each, because sometimes people say, what should I pray about? What should I pray for? So it's really, we're taking a look, invest enough time. That's important for us. Just consider that. Isn't that exciting? It's just invest enough time. Because think about what you are devoted to. Your job, maybe your family, hobbies. Maybe you like surfing, maybe fishing. You like certain areas where you invest. Maybe just a good indicator is how much time you invest in that area. So we're just talking about your relationship with Jesus. It is February. It is the month of love. It is nice to invest some time with Jesus, but it always comes back to not enough time if somehow you're feeling, man, it's just I'm not feeling close to God. It could be, and it's not always when I, Ainsley and I realize, you know, we're just not clicking. There's something's not really going on with our relationship here. And it isn't with proximity It isn't that she's in one room of the house and I'm in the other. That is not it. It's adequate time with each other. So think about that and that quality time, uninterrupted time, undistracted time together with Jesus will really, really launch you into a whole nother approach in a great lifestyle. I love Jesus. I think what I'm experiencing with the Lord should be for everyone, and I'm convinced of that. The next letter is I, intentional, intentional. Being intentional in these two areas that will sabotage your time with Jesus. Remember, he says, if you abide in me, abide my word, man, you go ahead and ask, and it's going to happen. But if we're not abiding, what does that mean? We're not praying. There's going to be a couple of things that sabotage your time with Jesus. Holy Spirit, now speak to us. But I'm going to start with Proverbs 21, verse 25 says, Despite their desires, the lazy will come to ruin, for their hands refuse to work. say, well, where are you going with that one? Well, I'm not here to cause any guilt, but I think we can all admit to being spiritual lazy at time. Anybody here with me? Don't raise your hand. Keep looking ahead. If you're married to that person, heads, everybody looking ahead. Okay. But being intentional is hard work. It's hard work. Let's be real about that. So letter A, stop allowing your feelings to dictate your behavior. Man, I'm going to get some time in with Jesus. But don't let your feelings dictate whether you're going to do that. All new behavior usually triggers some negative feelings. All new behavior. You know it. I know it. We know it. You go and exercise. You know it's good to do, but you're not going to want to do it. It's just not going to happen. But the change, as good as it could be, whatever it is, usually somewhere along the line, Got to be careful. Now, we're not trying to bring on guilt, naturally, 
But make sure, don't let your feelings rule over good things you know to do. Don't do that. Be strong men and women, young men, young women. Be strong. Don't let your feelings dictate. So it's going to be important. One of the marks of maturity is when you and I choose to do the good thing, the healthy thing, the right thing, even regardless of how we feel about it. We just know it's the right thing. We know it's the honorable thing. Now, we're living in a culture, and as a pastor, man, I am feeling the vibration of a culture that I'm trying to reach for Jesus. That culture is saying, well, listen, feelings are not bad. They're not bad. God made us with feelings. But the culture is saying, hey, your feelings are the way you should go because your feelings are what is true. Your feelings are the authority. Your feelings are what's right. Therefore, you go with how you feel. I'm saying, man, Jesus could be talking to you saying, things aren't clicking with us lately, and it could be your lack of time with me. So when we look here, it's going to be important God's created us with some great feelings, but if your feelings are going to just come along and tell you, you better stop, I just don't feel like it. I wish I was looking at things and I, oh, Lord, I, is there an easy way we can get people to pray? Is there a no rough emotional way to get people to not struggle? with good spiritual habits, I've got to tell you, there are no easy ways. You just got to (laughs) say, you know what? I know it's the right thing, and I'm mature enough. I'm going to do it because I want to come out of this time with God feeling amazing. It's going to be important. Letter B, be intentional with your thinking regarding prayer. What do I mean by that? You know, sometimes if we're not really thinking how God's word often talks about the benefits of prayer over and over and over again, I always think, well, why don't I pray more? What stops me from praying? We talked about the feelings. Oftentimes, we just aren't thinking about the regards of the benefits of prayer. So let's look at James chapter 5, verse 16, which says this. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Check that out. Now, that's written in the Word. It's been there for many, 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 many years. And it continues to speak to us today. So we don't pray because it's some mindless, meaningless, religious ritual. Ooh, I got to think about prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful. And if we are struggling, we may not be tapping into the power that the Word of God just says, the prayer of a righteous person. And I'm looking for, I'm looking at the righteous here. <laughs> I love that. You are all power packed resources, which is just amazing. So when we feel like our prayers are not doing anything, you got to go back and realize, let me think about, where's a word that will remind me? We're going to get something done here today by prayer. Woo-wee. Man, that just juices me up. It's like, let's get to prayer. Get this guy off from preaching. Let's just pray and get it going. Man, it's pretty monumental. And that brings us to M, motives. How about that? Motives, we're still in James chapter 4, verse 2 through 3, because the Bible tells us if we pray with wrong motives, it makes our prayers ineffective. So let's check that out for a moment. James 4, 2, yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. That would be one condition why we just lack so much. When was the last time you actually really went for it with prayer? And here's another one. Even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. So motives are very important. They matter when it comes to prayer. 
So how do we check our motives? Good question. That's great, and I'm glad you're asking. I ask that all the time. I'm going for it. God knows I want this thing. I might as well just lay it out there, but let's check my motive. Letter A, desire God's will above your own. Man, I am a follower of Jesus. He challenges me all the time. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he's about to go to the cross for me, he is praying in agony, saying, Father, if it's possible for this cup I'm about to drink to pass from me, this suffering and death, let it happen. But nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will, Father. Now, I think I'm a pretty good dad, a pretty good grandfather. My kids came up and said, hey, Dad, if there's any other way we can avoid the calamity of my family over here, can we get something happening? Let me tell you, I would pull out all my resources. And Jesus is asking his father if there's any other way. And there was no way. There was no way. The God of endless resources, there was no other way to redeem you. No other way. Jesus went to Calvary's cross and died for your sins. And that was great when Jesus decided to say, I'm going to follow through what the Father's desire is. So when we pray, we've got to think about and believe that God knows best. His will could actually be better than our will. Just think about that. Just, Lord, is your will going to be better than my will? Maybe that's where I'm going to start with this desire request of mine. And that God, with our lives and circumstances in our future, oh, I submit to your will. Remember, Jesus told his disciples, this is how you need to pray. And it's right there in Matthew 6, 10. He says, may your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's pretty powerful. I don't know if you ever end your prayer that way or you start that, you know, I'm coming in with my boatload of laundry list, God, but I just want to say, you override it all because I really want your will. Boy, that is powerful. Many things are a mystery when we pray. They really are. Are they not? Even though we pray subject matters, they really are a mystery. They are a mystery. When I pray about maybe the job I would like, or buying a house or not, or the new vehicle, or what school to go to, or relational conflicts, or the kids, or I pray about the spouse, or I pray about friendships. It's still a mystery. I'm going to pray the best shot I can. But Lord, what is your will on this? Lord, I want what you want. Man, that's pretty powerful. Can we desire God's will above our desires? And how do we do that? I think it's really best, letter B, God's word is the best prayer guide. It really is the best prayer guide. I have people still, I just don't know what to pray. I don't know how to pray. Well, remember, it was Jesus that says, if you remain in me, my words remain in you, you may ask anything you want and it will be granted. So it does seem to be that joint effort of time and prayer and the word. Now, wasn't that exquisite? Didn't we have a great time? And I'm wanting to piggyback off of the 21 days of prayer and fasting. We just concluded with January 28th. And we're benefiting on a lot of those prayers. We're seeing a tsunami of some breakthroughs. Glory to God. And thank you. Thank you for praying. Thank you for saying you were praying. But God's word is God's will. This word was inspired in heaven, written in heaven, then sent down where inspired men of the Holy Spirit wrote. Incredible book. So when the word of God came from heaven and we pray the prayer back to heaven, oh, man, we're going to get some real results. So when we take a look at the best prayer is praying the word of God. How does that look? How do you do that? Let me example that for you. Let's try just that. Let's take a look, because if you weren't with us in the morning hours when we were praying the word of God, 
Now I'm giving you an opportunity at your time to see what that's all about. I'm going to Colossians chapter 3. We're looking at verse 12 through 15. Bear with me while I read it. Then I'm going to come back and pray the word of God just to show you how that is done. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. So, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that you chose us. You loved us before anything even happened. And you've called us holy people. Lord, make us holy. Some things I see here in the word I fall short of, but Lord, clothe me with tender-hearted mercies. Help me to be kind. Lord, and I am not the humble person I really should be. Lord, may my gentleness and patience with others as I see allowing their faults to just work with them. Lord, when I see people and I live with people who are full of faults like me, Lord, I want to forgive them. I choose to forgive them, even when I am offended by the way they conduct their lives that are different than mine, because I recognize how you forgave me. I must forgive others. Lord, move that over Hope Chapel. Above all, clothe ourselves with love and bind us together in perfect harmony and let the peace that only comes from Christ rule in all of our hearts. May we be a peaceful loving, fun-loving body of Christ, members who are called to live in that peace. And Lord, may we always be thankful. In Jesus' name, amen? amen? That is praying the word. If you say, I don't know what to pray for, you get into the word and you'll see something and say, wow, that looks like a pipe dream right there. I don't know if I'm going to reach it. Might as well pray it and see what happens. Now you've aligned your heart with God's heart. Letter E, experiences. Let's take a look at that. What do I mean by experiences? Well, just like any relationship, shared experiences really uh, bring people closer together. Shared journeys, shared interactions, enjoying one another's uh, happenings, very important. I like what Psalms 34 verse 8 says when it declares, taste and see that the Lord is good. Doesn't that sound like an invitation? (laughs) Man. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. This is an invitation. Sometimes our motivation to pray may hinder, be hindered by the fact that we really, there might not be really any real fun in that. No real experience in that. We have never really experienced anything in times of prayer with God. Therefore, why do I want to do something that seems to be dry and dilapidated? I want, I want to have something going on. So we're taking a look at experience. It's going to be important. So letter A, practice praying with others would help. Practice praying with others. Why don't you join us on a Tuesday through Friday, 8 to 9? Practice praying with others. I realize that's intimidating for many people, but... The very thing that can motivate you into prayer would be to come and pray with others. And you start to listen to their prayers. You knit your hearts together. You start to see and grow past your fears and say, you know what? This isn't that scary. You start to hear other people pray that, wow, that person's in faith. That person's moving in requesting powerful declaration. We're seeing and hearing results, those kinds of shared experiences. Power a person up to say, man, is that how we're to pray together? Is that how I'm supposed to pray? It's so exciting. It builds our faith, listening to the faith of others. And it builds unity and it multiplies that spiritual impact. That's what we value 
Really, it's why we really value life groups, shared experiences and praying together. Those two big qualities will maintain a Christian's happy pursuit with Jesus. So letter B, practice watching for answers. Practice why, why pray and then you just don't expect anything to come. Practice watching for answers. That's going to be important. Once we start at taking prayer seriously, you might miss what God's doing. Wouldn't that be a pity? No wonder why we wouldn't want to pray anymore. We just don't think anything's going to happen about that. That's why back to Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 says, Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. So we go at that being very alert. Keep it very intentional. Man, I've got a lot of love. I just love my shared experiences with Jesus. That's between him and us. Now, some of you might benefit by that. But man, that keeps me coming back. Michael and Linda Ritter on our morning chapel prayer, they're always bringing up a reminder. Look what God did. (laughs) And we all, yeah, I forgot about that one last week. I love that part. Those shared experiences, practice watching for answers. When you see God do something, you tell your family member. You verify that. Faith comes by hearing the word. God did that. When was the last time you shared what you saw God do? That's pretty powerful. Lord, thank you for those shared experiences. Now, I just got to come close to wrapping this up with an example I was asking God this morning, what would be a shared experience that I can share with Hope Chapel and guests of something that you did in prayer? I couldn't think of something, so I went to brush my teeth. Aren't you glad about that? (laughs) And then my phone dinged. And here comes the shared experience. This happened, and I told Ains I could not believe it. A young family moved to Florida years ago. And I asked Stephen Pacheco if I could share this experience. And he said, absolutely, Paul. So this came to me at 7.16 a.m. God put it on his heart to text me. (laughs) Pretty awesome. This is to inspire you. I know God does this. But this is to inspire you to expect God. This is the text. I'll abbreviate. Once I got onto this, I, we were like talking. This is Stephen Pacheco on Father's Day 2019. You prayed for me to be free of the addiction of drinking. Today is 1,701 of being alcohol free. Amen. Stephen, if you're hearing this, never hiccup or desire. I hope and pray this message is encouraging to you. God's spirit moved through your prayer and into me, thankfully, taking my burden. Thank you. I love you. So I said, hallelujah. I love you, Stephen. I'm so (laughs) proud of you, your marriage, your four precious kids. May I share your testimony? He says, yes, sir. I love you. Miss you. And we're hugging and kissing. I I said, my sermon today is on the good habit of prayer. One of the points is the most exciting thing about prayer is answers. That's the point for today's. That's the most exciting thing about praying, when you see answers, when they come. And what a joy your text message is to me today. You have no idea. Praise the Lord, I said. Then he said, God never ceases to amaze me. I was sitting in church, and all of a sudden, I was overwhelmed with the feeling of texting you. The Holy Spirit is moving. (laughs) Glory to God. Glory to God. So what are you going to do with that? I'm going to keep praying. But more important, if something is not clicking with you and Jesus, please don't beat up your pastor to get a better message. (laughs) Just spend some time with Jesus. Get that half an hour of prayer and see what's involved there. Let me pray. Father, we want to thank you for your goodness. We're so grateful for the way that you're working in our lives. 
And we want to thank you for the many, many rich and wonderful ways that you bring salvation and hope and healing. That, Lord, we just can't do without you. So, Lord, we thank you right now. And maybe there are some that are here, or maybe even even as well, just watching with us. And you're here, and you're not going to get anywhere with prayer until you, you get in a right relationship with Jesus. You know, you know, God brought you here this morning, turned on your electronics to be with us. And Jesus is knocking at your door. Let me help lead you to a wonderful embrace with God who loves you so much. It's a prayer of surrender and a prayer of inviting him in. Let's pray this prayer together. Maybe this is for many of you, but maybe something of this particular prayer will produce great results. And the prayer goes like this, Dear Jesus. Let's pray that again out loud. Dear Jesus, I believe in you, that you are the Son of God. And I acknowledge today, I haven't given enough time to you. Forgive me, Lord. I've missed so much you've kept a heart for me today oh Lord I surrender my life I give you my heart forgive me of all my sins come into my life be my Lord and be my Savior I'm going to trust you Lord to lead me to be in times with you in prayer I need you. My family needs you. My future needs you. This nation needs you. Use me, O Lord, in prayer for them. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us today at Hope Chapel, Huntington Beach. It's our desire to bring the teachings of this church to others globally. If today's message has brought you closer to Jesus, we want to know. Can you send us an email to office at hopechapelhb.org? Would you consider supporting this ministry financially? You can give securely online at hopechapelhb.org slash give. If a check is your preferred method, you can send a mailed check to Hope Chapel. P.O. Box 548, Huntington Beach, California, 92648. If you want to be contacted by Hope Chapel, would you consider subscribing to our weekly newsletters at hopechapelhb.org slash subscribe. Whatever season of life you're in, we want to go through it with you. We want to thank you once again for joining us, and God bless you.